Good evening, I am Jack Fuji, and welcome to the 10th session of Agriculture 194C, Focus on Agriculture. Focus on Agriculture is a one credit course offered by your College of Agriculture, Forestry, and Natural Resource Management here at the University of Hawaii at Hilo. And we come to you live every Thursday evening from the television studios located in the Mo'okini Library here on the University of Hawaii at Hilo campus. Before I go on, uh, I'd like to make a few announcements. Uh, first of all, if you have to get a hold of me, if I could have the Elmo, please. There are several ways you can get a hold of me. One is by snail mail. You can mail me at UH Hilo College of Agriculture, Forestry, and Natural Resource Management, 200 West Kauili Street, Hilo, Hawaii, 96720. Dash four zero nine one. You can also get a hold of me by phone at nine three three zero eight five zero or nine seven four seven three nine three, or by fax at nine seven four seven six seven four. And for those of you on the internet, you can get a hold of me by email at jfujii at hawaii.edu. Also, I'd like to remind you, if you're taking the course for credit, uh, your, the deadline for submitting your local recipe is March 31st, so make sure you get your recipes into me or in my office by March 31st. If I don't receive it by then, your letter grade will be docked one letter, so make sure you get your recipe into me. Also, I'd like to remind you that next Thursday is spring break, so we will not be here uh, next Thursday evening. And uh, also, uh, for those of you who are watching, uh, at approximately 8 p.m., uh, I hope you jot down some questions and give us a call uh, for our question and answers portion of the class. We have another very interesting presentation for you uh, this evening. We're going to be talking about tea. So my guests this evening are Dr. Sabri Shihata, and uh, maybe we can get our camera or some Sabri. Can you wave your hand so everyone can see you? Okay, there's Dr. Sabri Shihata. He's a professor of agricultural economics at the uh, College of Agriculture, Forestry, and Natural Resource Management here at the University of Hawaii at Hilo. We also have Dr. Robert Chi, or Dr. Chi is the program director for the Institute of Agriculture Production and Marketing Education here at the University of Hawaii at Hilo. And finally, we have with us Mr. Fong. Uh, Mr. Fong is with Fong Pacific Nursery uh, here in Curtistown. And uh, also I'd like to mention that uh, the University of Hawaii at Hilo uh, has a grant from the Pacific uh, or the USDA Pacific Basin Agricultural uh, Research Center and uh, part of this research grant is to work on tea as well as other projects regarding post-harvest handling and value-added products. Uh, so tonight we're going to try to talk about tea. We're also cooperating with the U.S. Department of Agriculture and the University of Hawaii at Manoa College of Tropical Agriculture and Human Resources. So uh, I think uh, what we'll do is we'll start the uh, class this evening with Dr. Shihata and Dr. Shihata will give us a presentation on a little bit about the history of tea. So Sabri, why don't you come over and uh, take over the class. Thank you, Jack, and for giving me the opportunity to talk to you tonight. Um, my special presentation is factors affecting the uh, development of tea in Hawaii. I will try to see how it started. I think now. Can we get it through the TV now? Yeah. Oh, just a sec. Uh, is your mic on? My mic is on. I think we need just to get that. Uh, yeah, his mic is on. All right. Can we get the presentation on? Can we get the screen on? Yeah, the just a sec. We're going to try to see. Sorry, folks. How is it now? Can we get the screen now? 
Looks like we have a little bit of technical difficulties tonight. Please bear with us. Uh, for those of you who just joined us, you're watching Agriculture 194C, Focus on Agriculture. And this evening we're going to be talking about tea. So we hope that you don't change the channel and st stay. Okay, I think we're almost there. And again, for those of you who just joined us, you're watching Agriculture 194C, Focus on Agriculture. And we're uh, experiencing a little bit of technical difficulties. Uh, we'll uh, get this uh, straightened out in a, in a sec here. And uh, I think the uh, microphone for Dr. Shihata is not working. Wait, why don't you just unplug it? No, no, leave that. Oh, can you? No, 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 yeah, he should use this. Should okay. Can we take this one off? No, 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 just le leave, just hook that on. Okay. There we go. Yeah. It okay. must be important, I have double of them. <laughs> Good evening again, my name is Sabri Shihada. For those who doesn't know uh, where I come from, I'm originally from Cairo, Egypt, where we drink a lot of tea, by the way. We don't grow it. Uh, tonight, um, um, I would like to go through some of the presentation using the PowerPoint. <laughs> okay, now it's working. What is tea is known as Camellia sinensis, which is really beautiful flower and beautiful plant. Uh, this is one here. It can grow mostly in every part uh, from low elevation to high elevation. And the flower itself is so beautiful, such as I thought, oh, my golly, if this plant exists, I definitely would like to have it in my yard. Uh, and uh, actually, uh, tea has been discovered in uh, 2737 before Christ. And it discovered by the Chinese ambassador, uh, emperor her name Nyong. Uh, while he was boiling tea, some tea leaves fall in his pot and he tried to drink it. It was so good, such as they start propagating tea. After that, 2000 uh, uh, later, uh, after that came in and cultivated about 2000 years uh, uh, AC. Uh, the Mughals actually resisted most of the Chinese food except for tea. They adopted and and actually use it for various ceremonies. They, then the trade in coming, coming, the first people introduced tea to Europe are the Arabs. Uh, and that was in 850 AD. And they first used the Silk Road, and that's what documented. But actually, the Portuguese claimed that they are first to introduce that because they were better navigators. And they took the tea from uh, China to uh, Lisbon in 1515. And then they actually uh, moved it to Holland. And from uh, Holland and France, uh, they started to the Baltic states. And the normally they sold it for $100 in 1515. That's a lot of money, by the way. It used to be like gold. And the Mughal used actually tea like money. They used to make it like blocks and sell it uh, as a block. Then, uh, first time introduced uh, to the United States is through 1904, through St. Louis World Fair, uh, ice, uh, what was St. Louis World Fair. They served iced tea, and it was well received. But since then, they did not too much. Then Thomas Sullivan discovered using the tea as a tea bags. That's 18, uh, 1908. But the first time they served uh, iced tea was uh, 1890, which is very uh, recently when they bottled the tea and served it in the United States. Tea producing in um, almost 30 countries around the world. Uh, it's actually total acreage is about 5.1 million, 
three millions, uh, produce three millions metric tons. The acre produce about 500 pounds per acre. The major producing country are China, India, and Ceylon, or Sri Lanka. Those are the major producing country, but also produced in uh, Kenya, Japan, and many other uh, places in the world. Type of tea, actually, there are three types, oolong, black tea, and green tea. The difference, actually, in the processing of the tea. Looks like I can take it back. Uh, the oolong tea are processed, uh, uh, not allowed to be fermented much, but the green tea, they just wilt it and cut it and, and, and dry it and just serve it as it is. Black tea is allowed to ferment. Uh, United States uh, import, uh, import about 97,000 tons of tea annually and use it for mostly for as a black tea. Uh, most of the most of us drink actually carbonated uh, uh, drink, and that's the major 58 gallon a year per capita. Yeah, every child drink that much per capita. For tea only, we drink about uh, 7.4 gallon. The one which really you, know, you need to watch out is the canned tea. It's a canned iced tea or canned tea. That's become very popular these days. Well, what is tea actually uh, important for the study here is to find out what is the market trend for tea and whether or not we can grow tea in Hawaii. Uh, one of the things which uh, I need to mention here is uh, tea, especially green tea, have high vitamin uh, B and C and also have fluoride. What it really means, means actually uh, good for you, it keep you young have a lot of healthy benefit. It also have very much of uh, uh, effect on cancer because the type of chemicals in the tea leaves really prevent the cancer from progressing. Well, keep your breast nice. <laughs> Uh, one of uh, other health benefits, which is actually lower your blood cholesterol and take care of the bad cholesterol, then actually it's, uh, it's good for your heart. One of the things, in addition to the health benefit, that organic tea. Organic tea have grown tremendously in the last 20 years, actually. From, uh, they used to grow or sell about 150,000 uh, kilogram. Kilogram is about 2.2 .2 pounds, by the way, folks. And actually grow from, to, to reach 2001, it reached 3 million. That is another uh, market area which we, we can look at it, which grow tea as organically. Uh, the study conducted by University of Hawaii and Manoa revealed uh, at the state of Hawaii, revealed that about 90% of the household in Hawaii, they drink tea uh, four times, uh, drink, drink tea once or more uh, a day. Out of those, 40% drink it four times, means very frequently. Uh, also, they found that drink uh, tea mainly during night, you're gonna have some chance to drink it at night too. But uh, they, they are not morning drink, 24%. It looks like it uh, mostly was, uh, was dinner. Also, we find out that people drink tea for two main two reasons, actually. is the taste. I suppose they get some caffeine with it. And also for the health purposes. Then uh, in designing market plan, we need to emphasize the taste and health, and health benefit. Um, when we looked at the market attribute for consumer of tea, uh, consumption of tea, we found out the consumer looking for cons consistency, consistency in taste, they're looking for quality and health benefit in making purchase decision. Uh, the market forecast shows that the demand for tea is expected to increase. Given the health benefit, 
and also given that uh, people want more organic and more natural, natural medicine or they want the care of their health, uh, that we expect the demand for tea will continue to increase uh, in coming years. One of the main problems for Hawaii is the high labor cost. Almost like 60% of the total uh, production costs are due to the labor. But the news is USDA is working to develop a harvester uh, for tea. And actually, there are two of them. One we call it, uh, the one you saw it, and this one called the magic carpet. This is almost like robotic type, which is very light and would not damage the plant. And it has those uh, values. It's a very light. Uh, it's one man operator. It's accurate in cutting. And also uh, run over the branches without breaking them. It does harvest one hectare, which a hectare, by the way, 2.25 acres per hour. That's a lot of very fast. means that Hawaii could actually uh, grow tea and using mechanical harvester if we get appropriate technology. Hawaii producers need to develop market strategy in order to ensure success. You are not going to be able to compete with China and India and Sri Lanka in producing tea. Therefore, we have to develop a different strategy. We have to be more mechanized and more efficient as well as we have to, to, to look in a different market. We have to use Hawaii image. Hawaii image sells, folks. You have to use Hawaii image, connect the T to Hawaii. You will help post the product and image that is safe, fresh, and healthy product then the advertising campaign should emphasize produce locally, it's a fresh, and it's healthy to use. We need to look at the product strategy. We need to strategize our product, such as use blend, type of form, um, make it attractive to the consumer, such as will identify it by Hawaii. You Design a box with hula dancer in it, and you sell it in the place where the tourists come and want to take some little bit back from Hawaii. Having some visitor center close from the volcano, having the farm close from the volcano, have people walk into the farm, see how the plant is, how it's processed, how it's manufactured, put them in a box, make it attractive, the consumer will buy and take it home. And they mostly would be like gift item. One of the things which I was very impressed when I saw the tea plant, I said, my God, it's a beautiful plant. And it can be shaped and can be doing all kind of uh, landscaping. Then one of the market could be is to use the plant as a landscaping plant, where you have the nice hedge. And you can go ahead and get some cutting in the morning, boil the water and have fresh tea. Nothing added, it's totally fresh. Those are the kind of thing which uh, could be uh, become very good marketing. Um, gardening with tea, nothing, you know, nothing, this beautiful plant. You can put it in the garden like you grow vegetable, grow your tea in your, in your yard. Tea have, can be used as nutraceutical product, uh, and you could produce it and sell it in natural health food store as natural medicine. Supplement vitamin B, C, and, as, and you could add some other flavor to it and sell it at high price because you are not be able to sell it at a cheaper price. Of course, you have to require a significant amount of development and work, and you have to really follow all the regulation, regulation which is needed if you're going to go with nutraceutical. You know, tea can be used as fabric dye for many years. That's another thing. You can use it for, yeah, it can be used for fabric dyes. It's beautiful, actually. Uh, what you price your product 
uh, you have to expect uh, tea. I when when I studied the market for it, I found its price insensitive. Means actually, consumers are not going to cut their consumption if the price went up. That by itself, given Hawaiian name and other factor you added, you find that actually you could sell the tea produced in Hawaii at higher price than actually produced somewhere else. And that's because uh, it's price insensitive means they are not going to change or cut the production because the price went up little. Consumer will buy it if it is good quality and also made in Hawaii. Um, but one has to study the cost of production and find a way to produce the product efficiently. And that's why we need economic feasibility, which to determine what it takes to make the industry successful and profitable. And that, I'm starting working on it, um, and should be done by the end of the year. Uh, you got to have to tag on the visitor market, which provide a market niche for Hawaiian specialty tea. You got the customer right in your door. You don't have to distribute, you don't have to ship. What else do you want? It's the best situation you are in. You get it to the tourist, which you don't have no shipping cost. Produce in a smaller scale, high quality, and sell it as a gift item. Then you minimize a lot of costs, which could be due to the shipping cost, and could be due to the marketing cost. Then you eliminate most of those costs by selling directly to the visitors. Various outlets could be used for that, and that could be and one other market niche. Another promotion strategy is to bring people to taste tea and have a taste contest and uh, the best of the show or <laughs> come and enjoy the, the trip and, and come see us and taste the different tea, educate people. Because when you educate people, when they go home, they can bring, they can bring that things with them. And they can come back and order from you through e-commerce or something like that. Uh, one of also strategy is, uh, is also to use, uh, tea is used for ceremonial tea for many, many years. And therefore, we relate it back to the culture and tie it to it. Bring people to see tea as a plant. Many of us don't know what tea is as a beautiful plant and also life and others. One of the promotion strategy is Tea for enjoyment and tea for your health. That's one of the mottos. Tea for health, tea for your health. Drink Hawaiian tea. Thank you, folks. OK, and now we'll turn the class over to Robert Chi. And uh, Robert will demonstrate uh, how to uh, prepare and serve tea. So Robert, why don't you go ahead? OK, thank you. Aloha. Good evening. So uh, tea, just like Dr. Shihada, oh, I'm sorry, I forgot to turn him on. <laughs> I'm sorry. Aloha. <laughs> Good evening. I would like to carry on with Dr. Shihada's uh, presentation about the tea in Hawaii. Everybody know the tea is a, such an exciting topic to talk about, and also peeling topic to really gain a fresh idea in Hawaii. We're talking about the tea productions. Also, I, I, not because tea has uh, more than 5,000 year histories, but also tea is tastes good and good for you. So compare it with other soft drink, or soft drink. So there are volume of research already describe the benefit of the drinking tea. So uh, right now the tea is not because we are talking about it uh, is uh, only Asian culture. Tea actually deeply rooted in many cultures in Europe, in uh, South America, also Far East. So uh, because people realize to the, 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 the benefit of the tea, not only limited to a certain kind of a preventive oral disease, but also benefit of all some cardiovascular, uh, preventing cardiovascular uh, killer disease, also reduce cholesterol, reducing blood sugar, et cetera. The volume of research, as Dr. Shihata has mentioned, as mentioned. So today, almost everywhere you go, 
you pretty much see different kind of a tea and a tea product. So on the market, such as iced tea, everybody uh, like the iced tea, but also fruit tea, oolong tea, green tea, black tea, even wet tea. So you never heard that today. We use, want to use this kind of opportunity to show you some example of the tea. If we can turn the camera on the counter a little bit, so we can use this uh, opportunity to show you the variety of different kind of green tea. And uh, I don't know what, oh yeah, so already. So uh, green tea and oolong tea and the black tea. On this place, you can see. Just leave it there. They okay, just leave the it there it is. Okay. Yeah, we have a little sample of white tea. So white tea is a very special and unique tea which has special health benefit to people. So, uh, so uh, tea actually has become a second major drink in the world and the people talking about and the drinking about for fulfillment of the modern demand of better health. Today, I would also use this opportunity to introduce you one of the many, uh, only few pioneers on this big island who not only drinking tea, but also grow tea on this big island. Let's welcome Mr. Fang. Mr. Fang is, uh, is a one of, you know, uh, he uh, run a nursery that identified this kind of things working with USDA to successfully and uh, cultivate uh, some tea plant. Here's some example. I would like the, the doc, uh, Mr. Fang to show the tea plant for you. So, so this the tea is two year, two year. Oh, by the way, Mr. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. This one year is the five months. Five months. So from the sea, from, from sea. sea. Yeah. This yeah. is from cutting. This is from cutting. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I would like to invite uh, Mr. Fong to do some demonstration on how to brew teas. So later on, regarding how to grow tea is a different topic. Today, we would like to focus on today's time, we're going to how to brew a tasty, healthy, green tea, woolong tea, and black tea. The topic we're going to cover today is uh, how to using traditional cup to make uh, woolong tea. Right after this demonstration, the second demonstration is using a sophisticated and tea brewer to make uh, green tea. So the last demonstration, which I'll prepare three demonstrations, is how can you turn your coffee maker into a tea brewer so to enjoy morning uh, Kona coffee and evening enjoy beautiful Hilo tea. I wish we have a big, big farm down here, but in the near future maybe. So, uh, oh, okay, let's uh, put the plant away. Oh, by the way, you can ask any question if you... Uh, after. We, okay, after that. Okay. <laughs> so, okay, let's turn the camera into, a, into the table. So, Mr. Fang, and we do have a recipe how to cook in uh, those kind of teas. We do have a recipe. Right now, Mr. Fang prepare using traditional cup to brew uh, green teas. You can see uh, Mr. Fong using a bamboo uh, kind of a server and uh, using it to put a tea into the cup. <clears throat> yeah. Then we uh, pre-boil some uh, water. Oh, water. It's all, uh, yeah. They boil some boiling water into the cup. Then they drew some hot water on top of the tea cup to keep the balance of the cup, the temperature of the cup, and also match the temperature of the tea. So that's one of the tradition. Then meantime, using hot water to sterilize whatever bacteria or whatever on the cup to prepare for serve the teas. 
Then after that, they tweak a little, little cup a little bit, make a little gap, then starting serve. Pour on the tea. Then tea is served. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> now we went to the food. Unfortunately, people in the audience or people in, uh, you know, in front of the TV kind of enjoy this tasty and mm, smells mm, good tea. That for is your, delicious for your health. <laughs> uh, oh, that's nice. In order to brew the green tea, there are certain formula at a home, a restaurant, anywhere. So, uh, so this formula is not based on one individual's uh, green tea. experience, but rather on research, traditional history for people who brew the teas. Not like us in the office, we just put a tea bag in a cup. But uh, this is a specific, uh, very specific way to brew the tea. The reason why Mr. Fong put the water in there and set for a while, then they serve. But it cannot set too long. The first brew is usually, as the handout I give to you, is a 30 second. You cannot serve the tea longer than 30 seconds because later on the process the, the heat of the hot water is going to attract a lot of a chemical from the tea leaf that made the tea turn into a dark color and taste a little bitter. So in this way, time should just be right. Just be right. So that's the reason why so we have a uh, you know, certain time. Usually one tea, one serve for the tea, you can brew three to five times. You just cannot use it one time and throw the tea leaf away. Usually, kind of three to five times. The first brew take uh, one minute, about one minute. So we cannot use the time clock, stopwatch, and measure that. But roughly one minute. But uh, after this, after you finish the tea, see, in there, in the brewer, tea brewer, there virtually no water in there, for very good reason. Because the hot water is still in the brewer. They will continue to attract the chemicals out of a tea leaf, out of a tea leaf. That's the reason why so, uh, the tea becomes bitter and bitter. Not a taste and uh, not a, you know, the, the green rama is disappeared. They become really taste like a, really bitter and uh, liquid. So in this way, so you gently serve this tea and leave the tea for second brew. When hot water is applied to the brewer, the cup brewer again, this time is the second time to brew the tea. This takes 20 seconds. So second brew of this green tea takes 20 seconds for good reason, because the tea is already soaked. They're ready to attract a lot of chemical out of the tea. So roughly right now, 20 seconds is almost over. Is pretty much ready to do the a second brew, to the serve. So uh, when the cup is ready, traditionally we not put tea, fold one cup full. You put one third a cup full, then continue rotation, to keep the balance and strength of the tea. You just cannot put one cup full and go to another cup, and the four cup later four different colors you will see. <laughs> because the, the, the brewer will continue to brew the tea at the same time you're serving. So in this way, I try to learn something else. Make a little gap on the cup, and then you serve, and serve, 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 serve. So in this way, you keep the four cup tea equal balance in their strength and their flavors. That's what I learned. <laughs> But it tastes good. <laughs> so second brew. So, but I still have some leftovers, so you can drink this or serve to uh, another. Uh, like I said, their meaning why uh, you continue brew, you cannot leave hot water in the tea brewer. The hot water will attract a lot of chemical from the tea leaf. So when hot water present in the cup, they will continue, you know, chemical reaction still doing. So when there's no hot water present, the process is stopped, is paused, until you got hot water again. 
So the third brew started. The third brew take about, uh, I cannot remember because it's in seconds, 45 seconds. 45 seconds. So uh, 45 seconds, you can ready to starting and to, uh, to serve again. Usually tea is a social environment. Not only because they have a health benefit, tea also serves as a social instrument for people getting together, share time, and talking story together. Talking together. So usually when you're drinking tea, tea is the only instrument to get people together. However, there are other things. Yes. Oh, it's very important. I dropped my microphone, I'm sorry. And uh, when you're drinking tea, the social environment, it also provides some little quackers and uh, some, uh, some kind <laughs> of a nut, whatever. So in this way, you put this nut together. You are not only enjoy tea as a health fulfillment, but also enjoy tea as a social instrument. Bring together family, bring family together, bring friends together. Because tea, there are no limitation on age. The young, young kids, they also drink tea. The elderly, of course, they enjoy tea. For everybody uh, working all day long, they want a moment of relaxation. So that's the good. When you're drinking tea, I eat some snacks. That's really the, is a way to do it. Enjoy the tea. Enjoy the tea. You not only enjoy the talking, but also enjoy the tea. OK, let's continue. Continue. I would like to invite uh, Mr. Fong to do another demonstration. So uh, because the tea is over brewed, <laughs> nobody wants to drink this, because it's going to become a bitter, really bitter. So uh, like I said, on your handoff, on your handoff, the maximum number of the brew is a five. Is a five. First brew take about one minute. And the second brew take about 20 seconds. And third is about 45 seconds. The fourth take about 80 seconds. The last one take even longer, the 140 seconds. Everybody knows the reason. Why? Because all the chemicals are there already be attracted. The surface can be all be attracted by the first, second, and third brew. So fourth and fifth brew take a much longer time because the, all the chemicals are already attracted from the by the hot water. By the hot water. Let's use the same formula, same recipe. Let's. Uh, uh, I invited the, uh, Mr. Fong to using a sophisticated tea set to serve oolong tea. It's a really eye-opening uh, environment. And for those of you who just joined us, you're watching Agriculture 194C, Focus on Agriculture. And tonight we're talking about tea with Robert Chi and Mr. Fong and Dr. Sabri Shihata. So as you can see, and uh, Mr. Fong used a bam special bamboo, which is, uh, you know, using as a utensil, and put the tea into the tea brewer. Tea set, they consist of a tree, which is a preserve, you know, they prevent a lot of a, a lot of water, you know, spread on the water, spread on the table. But uh, also including one item is a tea brewer. Another item is called tea distributor. But I cannot find that word to translate it, but a tea distributor, which is after you brew the tea, you need to empty the tea into the tea uh, dispository, whatever you call, or bank, to get ready to serve and leave the brewer you know, without the hot water. Because when hot water is in the brewer, everybody knows they're going to turn tea into really bitter. You just cannot even drink later on. And follow the same formula with about one minute, Wulong tea will be served. So you can see. This tree is made of special wood. In Hawaii, we have very beautiful wood. What do you call? Koa, right? We can use that to make a better one. So uh, as a tea set. Tea set, another very important component is tea cup. The tea cup has a smaller cup, 
and the meeting cup, and the glass cup, and also other cups. So any pretty much everything you can use as tea as a, yeah. So this is a tea brewer. It's pretty much is no tea is in there, and the tea bank they use to distribute the tea already brewed by from the tea brewer. First round of tea is ready. I wish you guys come over and you know take one to taste it. If you anyone want to come over and taste it, so that's a, for you. For you guys on in front of the TV, this is a, you know only thing we cannot deliver. So you can see us, can hear us, but you cannot share the taste of the really good mm. woolong tea. Excellent. It's good. Remember, the uh, tea industry if could be, become a reality. They not only uh, bring economic uh, contribution to our society, but also bring a lot of uh, associated industry bring about tea set, instrument. We try, we not try to copy any cultures. Okay, even though their tea has a 5,000 year history, we try to create our own Hawaii cultures. Later on, I'll share some examples for this. So all those kind of design can, could be, uh, just like Dr. Shihata mentioned in his presentation, could be have a Hawaiian nature. Okay, the tree could be in the koa tree, could be in the other style. Uh, this cup is kind of a traditional, uh, you know, what you call clay made or whatever. We maybe may use a cook now, you know, to make the cup, who knows? <laughs> so depend on you to make this invention. So uh, in this way, we can make this possible, make this possible. Robert, maybe you can explain a little bit about this little tea server, and uh, maybe the overhead camera can come in and, and show the, uh, this thing can come out here, right? Yeah. This is so sophisticated tea server. The retail value is about $400 which is Mrs. Fong bought when they were on tour in South Pacific. Uh, this little thing is, looks uh, really good. It's a piece of art. On this side, you will see another little drainage down here. Because this tree will serve as tea set, a tree. You put a tea instrument, a cup, pot, and a tea bank on top, just in case of leakage. Okay, so the tea will be, will be, will be drained from this little thing. We should have a, we should have a little pipe somewhere drain to the, <laughs> draining to the bucket, whatever. So in this way, without, without put a lot of water on the table. Actually, I made a mistake. So I put a lot of water on the table. don't do that at home. <laughs> Actually, there, there's supposed to be a a little rubber tubing that hook connects to that and then you put that into a uh, wash basin or uh, whatever. Uh, the little, uh, little grid look like a grid which is uh, to put on top to serve to you know put a you know make a level make a level for prepare to put a teapot and tea bank and to on the top on the tea, uh, on the top. In the meantime you can also put some cup have a flat surface, whatever. If you, if, uh, if anybody know the carpentry, whatever, you can make it much better. I believe you can make it much better. So uh, you know, make a make a canoe, you know, things <laughs> in a little bit bigger, but it looks Hawaiian, you know, style. Hawaii style, because Hawaii, we everybody know, produce the best flower, best palm tree, and best tea in future. So in this way, we have the best. Let's carry on Dr. Shihada's presentation. The market computation is going to be the quality and the uniqueness because we have a, got a gift for the you know, great nature down here. We pretty much can grow anything on top, on top of uh, the notch. So in this way, the market is there. Now, I do not know about the time, but we carry on the program. The, the third demonstration is how you turn your coffee maker turn to tea brewer. Sounds like a simple question, but also sounds like you already tried this at home. 
you already tried this office. However, maybe today what I presented to you, you may be able to open your eye. Hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> As you can see, I uh, took the uh, regular tea ma uh, coffee maker to here. Usually we use you know, coffee in there. <clears throat> but instead, you put a coffee in there. I gotta put some hot water first. Hot water is enough for four cup. Four cup. So remember, when you cook these uh, teas, cooking uh, the co same as uh, coffee, you're dealing with hot boiling water. And sometimes, if you're not be careful, they're gonna burn your fingers. So in this way, remember the number of uh, the, the quantity of the water you put in is this cup supposed to hold. You cannot using other cups, okay, different size cups, dump into it because the reason why, because this cup can only hold this quantity of water. If you put more, what's gonna happen? You know what the consequence is. The water gonna get out. They're gonna burn. So be careful using original. Use original tea cup. Make a measure. Then put it into the, put it into in there. The key for turning your coffee maker into the uh, a tea brewer is this lid is this lid. The reason why, because uh, traditionally what we do, we put a tea bag into the, into the into a glass container, we'll put maybe two to two, three or four tea bag in there. Or second choice is you take this away, you put a loosening tea into there. Ah, no, 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 that's not the right uh, way to do it. Because the reason why, when you serve this tea, you will see a lot of leave tea leaf floating around or you, when you're drinking maybe you suck a lot of uh, tea leaf into your mouth sometimes the tuner is a happy feeling uh, also especially especially the loosening tea there are a lot of a uh, fragment small fine fragment you just don't want to drink in something which is uh, not a, not a clear enough but uh, somehow something in the water makes you feel I'm happy to drink it, even though it smells good. This is the way to do it. Remember what I said, this lid of a coffee maker make different. Make different. Traditionally, this lid will serve a trigger to let the coffee cooking and the drippy immediately. Without this little notch down there, without the little notch down here, the water will store on top portion of the, the coffee maker right until to reach the certain level have an overflow mechanism all the coffee maker have an overflow mechanism if your water is not dripping down but it's deposited down here but the water will overflow the dripping down anyway right the overflow is a is a safety measures use that as brew for oolong tea or green tea and later on, because this topic is how to brew the black tea. So uh, I will use in the traditional filter, which is uh, any brand you're supposed to use for your coffee maker. You put a loosening tea, which you were supposed to, to make a black tea. This is a sample of the black tea. We have a green tea, white tea, and black tea. So we have previously, Mr. Fong demonstrated using green tea and also uh, uh, oolong tea. But now, here's a way to do the black tea. You put, put the black tea in the filter, into the filter. That's the coffee filter, by the way. Played on top of the coffee maker. you starting cooking the water. And remember, Make sure you put your holder without the lid. The key is this lid make a difference. This lid make a coffee, but it cannot make, uh, make a tea. Without this lid, it's make beautiful tea. You will see that. 
I'm gonna find uh, one glasses so you can see clearly. So uh, there are no even little fragment key leaf will be we escaped from the drinking uh, from the from the tea cup. So in this way, you were drinking clear and purified, which is the filtration. The tea is really really good. Whatever you want to call this method is yes? so. Uh, but naturally, it just happened. I use it, but not necessarily. Not, not necessarily is my inventions. But everybody can use this to enjoy the tea. That's the point I want to make it. So because the sophisticated and also traditional tea cup is a pretty much is different culture, but also different kind of a economic factor. You have to buy four hundred dollar some tree, but this one fifteen dollar, nineteen dollar, you can make a really beautiful office. Tea maker, and at home you enjoy the tea on your dinner table. That's the point I want to make. So now you can see the overflow is kicking in. On top, if we are we ask the camera to shoot it on top of the tea maker, uh, the coffee maker, you will see. Uh, okay, the tea already cooked. The water is halfway full, but it will never overflow to outside because the coffee maker overflow mechanism. To drain the water in, the time I you I calculated a little bit using my watch, okay, it's about one minutes. It's a 40, 45 minutes. First brew take about a 45 to one minutes. The second brew, I will show you how you do the second brew. Let's carry on. Let's take the first brew. You see, the tea is making by using the coffee maker. You have the lights uh, because we're dealing with hot water. Remember, safety is number one. So uh, don't uh, just uh, you know put your finger in hot water. So uh, so you need to keep the lid down. I just keep the lid open because for demonstration purpose. Keep the lid down. Let's keep cooking until until you observe the tea is not dripping anymore. This dripping is uh, through the overflow. The time pretty much is one minute, perfect for first brew. However, this is my coffee maker. Your coffee maker at home is quite a different. Maybe someone has a bigger coffee maker, someone has a cup coffee maker. So the time and quantity of the tea is could be different. So beware of that. <clears throat> beware of that. But it is uh, worth to try this. See, now you can see the first brew of tea is ready. It's ready. The, the, the tea is a gradually, you know, stop liquid. And you know, tea is draining down, gradually reduce, reduce. However, on top, still have a lot of water. A continue brew the tea leaf. Continue brew the tea leaf. So in this way, this cup, which is served the first tea leaf, first tea brew you see? Can we zoom in this uh, tea cup? And zoom in the tea cup a little bit, the camera? Hold it still. Okay. So <laughs> I hold it still. It's a pure, no single grain of the tea leaf is passing through this coffee maker. It's a very beautiful and also very tasty. And healthy. <laughs> <laughs> when we drinking this, it's about one minute. Okay. So remember the formula. The second brew is about 20, uh, 20, uh, 20 seconds. So right now, one minute plus 20 seconds. We're talking about the black tea. Usually take a longer time. So now, as you can see, the tea still cooking. They're not a stop. If I ask you a question, anybody know why the tea is still cooking? Because hot water is present on top. When hot water present, the tea will continue cooking, attract the, you know, the chemicals out of the tea leaf. Remember, Mr. Fong did the demonstration. So with a little uh, tea brewer, after the serve, they must empty the tea brewer ready for you to put another hot water in for reasons. 
for reasons. But now, let me uh, dump this uh, first row out. We're ready to put the T lid, just this, this, the lid, back to where they belong. Watch this. Watch this. If you put this in, second brew is ready for you. But this brew tastes different because longer time. It's, uh, I don't know about uh, this uh, time, maybe it's uh, 30 seconds longer. But uh, you will see, oh, you know, you will see the color also different. Remember, each tea, sir, uh, each, when you cook a tea, so each, each uh, brew, which costs, uh, which is about uh, 1 minute, 20 seconds, or 45 seconds, and later on become 1 minute, 20 seconds. Uh, last brew, you can take uh, pretty much 2 minutes and 20 seconds. So now the tea, the second brew, is almost ready. Almost ready. Like a coffee, serve coffee, you just pull this container out. Even though they have the uh, tea still down there, they not, they already below the overflow, the threshold. Tea, even though they have it, they still deposited down here. They never drop. Okay, but this is the second brew is ready. Can you tell tell the difference in the color? The two cup, this first brew, the second brew. This is beautiful woolen tea. This is a really beautiful black tea. If you cook a little longer, they will, you know, uh, really turn into a black English tea. That's really, uh, in Europe, a lot of people enjoy drinking the, the, the black tea. In Japan, in, in China, in uh, you know, other part of the world, people like green tea, green tea. But uh, in Europe, so a lot of people like, you know, the black tea. So no matter what, the simple coffee maker will serve them all without spending $400 for the, uh, but that's art. That's a piece of art. So in this way, that's one of the product which is coming with tea industry. So tea industry, like Dr. Shihada said, they also bring a lot of pharmaceutical and also landscaping industry. There are so many good potential in there. We just would like to use of this opportunity to focus on agriculture. We talk about the potential agriculture on Big Island. So we try to get it together to create something which is currently not exists in the Hawaii. It's the tea culture. So uh, in order to demonstrate this, so uh, I made some kind of a, uh, interesting you know, presentation for you. I'm going to put additional water in there using the coffee maker. To continue brew the third and fourth tea. However, this time I serve you differently. I dump this out. You see the color is different, okay? It's uh, really, you can enjoy, you know, tea in different way. Okay. And also, uh, like Dr. Shihada mentioned, tea is not only one single item, economic items, but also tea serve many other items, such as tea cookie. Okay, you know, one professor just traveled from overseas, they brought some kind of a tea cookie. So this box of tea cookie, just like Dr. Shihata uh, did a research mentioned, we not uh, compete with other, uh, you know, tea rich cultures, but we create something which is uh, currently not exist, but a market will like something natively grown and purely naturally grown, organic growth, whatever you want to call, from Hawaii. Because we produce best agricultural product. However, quantity is limitation because Hawaii land is not that big. So in this way, we, we create a value added product. This box of cookie will surprise you only total about 2,000 cookie, small cookie like these. Based on the information I got, it's $20. It's 
with buy cookie for one dollar for one dozen, right? So if you put a tea flavor in there and made a beautiful Hawaii package just like this, whatever, you may use your imagination. You can create something which people really appreciate. Those that point, uh, Dr. Fuji, Dr. Uh, Shihada, Mr. Fong, and many, many others. And remember, you know, we're uh, University of Hawaii, Manoa, University Hilo, and also USDA Pacific Basin Research, we join together to work on this project. Take time. Every good project, take time. Do not get it too hot, jump on the wagon. You need to study, just like Dr. Shihada doing, do step-by-step -step research to find out the feasibility in Hawaii, whether or not we we able to grow this uh, you know, tea. And how kind of, what kind of product is best fit in the market and need. So in this way, how we serve Hawaii tea to our tour, to our guest who travels spending a couple of thousand dollars come to Hawaii to enjoy Hawaii. Here is the example. Assume this tea is grown on the beautiful mountain of Kevalia Mountain. It's a volcano area. The beautiful tea, just assume, just okay. So, uh, but uh, actually just experiment. You serve tea, you serve Hawaii tea, a warm, a hot tea with warm aloha spirit with it. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay, we've, <clears throat> we've come to that portion of the class where those of you in the viewing audience and of course those of you here in the classroom can ask questions of our guests this evening. This evening we're featuring uh, Dr. Sabri Shihata, Professor of Agricultural Economics at the College of Agriculture, Forestry and Natural Resource Management here at the University of Hawaii. And we also have uh, Dr. Robert Chi, uh, who's project director here for the, let's see, I think I had it here. It's the uh, project director for the Institute of Agriculture Production and Marketing Education. And we also have with us uh, Mr. Fong of the Fong Pacific Nursery. So if you have any questions in regards to tea, uh, please give us a call. The numbers are on the screen, 974. 7726 and 9619046. So while we wait for some phone calls, do we have any questions from the classroom? No questions from the classroom. Well, maybe uh, while we're waiting for some questions, uh, uh, Sabri, maybe you can say something uh, more about some of the research. You can say it from over there and uh, tell us uh, some of the research that you're doing in regards to. Uh, uh, the tea uh, marketing, etc. No, so uh, thank you, Jack. At the present time, we're trying to uh, try to look for the markets of tea in Hawaii. Try to find out what uh, kind of market niche we can fulfill, like the high value added products. We we'll try also to study the economic feasibility of producing tea in Hawaii. Find out what, how much it costs and how you can produce the product efficiently and uh, also produce it at a profit. And one of the things which we got excited with, what Bob was indicating, and also Mr. Fong, that one of the excellent variety, which uh, an excellent product can be produced in Hawaii is near the volcano area. And because of the high elevation, or for one reason or another, it seems like it's uh, it produces good quality. In Hawaii, we cannot sell the product less than about $50 a pound. But I was amazed in 1515, the product was still was $100. Sabri, uh, may I interrupt you for a sec? We've yeah. got our first uh, caller, so uh, could you let us know where you're calling from and go ahead with the question, please. Hello. Hi, where are you calling from? I'm Hilo. Okay, and your question? Um, since tea is so good for your health, is there an appropriate age where... Sorry, you're hearing myself on the TV, this is really weird. Okay, um, is there an appropriate age to start drinking tea? Did you get the question, Robert? I, I can't hear that very well. Uh, well, 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 well. Appropriate Could you, age. 
Could you repeat that question? Could you repeat we'll try the question? I'm sorry, I'm having a hard time hearing. Is there an appropriate age for someone to start drinking tea? Oh, is there any appropriate age to, for someone to start in drinking tea? That's a very good question. Dr. Shihata, you want to start it? <laughs> <laughs> well, don't start as old as I am. <laughs> I think there is no age. I think the more the early you, 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 you use tea, the better, I suppose. Yeah, <laughs> the, I agree with Dr. Shihata. There are no certain age, based on my reading and research, there are no specific research indicates what age you're supposed to start in drinking tea. Actually, tea virtually is, uh, you know, is good, based on the research, is good for everybody. Especially people have a health conscious. Uh, they want to have, keep their uh, health, you know, preventing some oral uh, disease and reducing uh, body uh, cholesterol, blood cholesterol and sugars and uh, also many other health benefits. And uh, one thing is if you're tired, fatigue, whatever, tea is a really good remedy for reduce the fatigue. You know, you know just, uh, you know, <laughs> make a, you feel better. When you get a headache, you drink one cup of tea, you feel better. Yes, there are so many research has been proved it's work. Okay, I hope that answers the question from Hilo. Uh, we have another caller. Uh, could you let us know where you're calling from and go ahead with the question, please. Hi, I'm calling from Hilo. Okay. Um, I was wondering if you could briefly explain again what's the difference between green tea, oolong tea, and black tea? Okay, what is the difference between green tea, black tea, and oolong tea? Okay, thank you for that question. That's a very, very interesting question. Because including myself, I have a really limited knowledge regarding tea. Tea has more than 5,000 year histories. We, everybody, like you, me too, everybody down here is the same. We're all studying. The difference between oolong tea and uh, green tea and the black tea and even white tea, there's, you know, not because they grow on different plants, so you can produce some teas. The key is a process. Same tea leaf harvest from the same plant, you can produce in all kinds of teas. You can produce in green tea, oolong tea, and black tea alike. How you do that? Because tea leaf, to make a tea leaf, is depend on is the enzyme process, when you process, the enzyme process the trigger the chemical release. So when you harvest the tea without any damage of the tea leaf, you just immediately process it and dry them up. Then it becomes green tea. And the second approach is oolong tea, is you, pro you take the tea leaf out, then you did the physical damage on the tea leaf mild, not a complete, you know, you know, really damage, you know, just like uh, make some, uh, you know, tea leaf, like uh, really mash them, but make a little minor mechanical damage. Uh, the mechanical damage was speeding up the chemical process. Then you emit, and then, uh, I don't know how long it'll take, maybe, uh, you know, one hour, maybe a couple of minutes, and then dry it up immediately, stop enzyme process. Then it will become oolong tea. Black tea, however, is different. You need to ferment it. The damage on the tea is going to be bigger, much bigger. So the less enzyme process is accelerated, then at a certain stage, you dry them up. Then it will become a black tea. However, white tea is very rare. It's a different time of the year to process on top of the tea, just a little bit on top of the tea, to producing some white tea. That's really rare. It's a very expensive, difficult process. I'll hopefully answer your question. Thank you. Okay, uh, we don't have any callers right now, so uh, for those of you who just joined us, you're watching Agriculture 194C, Focus on Agriculture, and this evening we're talking about tea. And uh, we have with us this evening Dr. Sabri Shihata, Professor of Agricultural Economics, and I think we have another caller, so We'll take the caller. Uh, could you let us know where you're calling from? And go uh -huh. ahead with the question, please. Uh, hello? Hi, where are you calling from? Hi, I'm calling from Papaiko. OK, and your question? Um, I was wondering, I think it was uh, Dr. Shihata mentioned fruit tea. 
Was that? Protein. What what kind of tea? I'm sorry, I'm having hard. Protein. Protein. Oh. <laughs> Okay, why don't you go ahead and uh, ask the question and answer that, Sabri. Go ahead. Um, what, what kind of fruit do you make tea out of? A fruit tea is just uh, the tea, regular tea, and you add some kind of flavor to it. Oh, but, yeah, oh so not like the peel then or anything like that? No, it's just uh, any kind, but you add some flavor to it. Oh, okay. Like a regular tea adds some flavor, and oh. it's a uh, fruity taste. Oh, okay, okay. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Oh, yeah. hey, well. I, I would like to carry on a little bit for the audience and uh, for the classroom also. The fruit tea Dr. Shihara mentioned can be any kind of fruit which generates the sweet, sourness, and all other flavors you w would like to use. You cut the little pieces and uh, put it in there, a piece of a lemon, put it in there. This will become a lemon tea. You pit, cut a piece of uh, uh, pineapple, this become a pineapple tea. You cut <laughs> out a little uh, ginger, for example. Ginger, you put it in there, would this become a ginger tea? It's supposed to really, really help you when you've got a you know, high temperature or something like that. But uh, use medicine <laughs> first. <laughs> OK, yeah. Robert, we have another caller. So uh, will the next caller let us know where you're calling from? And go ahead with the question, please. Hello, um, I was trying to see uh, what elevation the tea grows best and also where I could get tea plants to grow around the volcano. Oh, it's, okay, it's where can you get the tea plants? And I didn't get the first question. Elevation, elevation. Uh, for first what question elevation was, the tea plants grow the best? Okay, uh, who wants to take care of that? I'll let Bob go for it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, tea can grow in any elevation, actually, from sea level to high, as high as uh, um, thousands of feet. However, it grows the best around at least about 1,000 feet high in order to have good quality. That's as best I can. I'm not a culturist, however, but I'm, I, I took a chance at it. <laughs> <laughs> so I carry on this uh, question and answer. Hopefully, this will help you. I have cleaned myself also. And uh, regarding where is the perfect way to grow the tea, USDA did a lot of research. They have an article published. You can order directly through the extension service. Uh, based on my knowledge, tea, just like uh, Dr. Shihata said, virtually you can grow tea in anywhere. However, there are some poor and con. If you grow tea in lower elevation, there are, invited, there are so many bug and fungi issues will bother you to grow a healthy tea. So uh, higher elevation, uh, the, the, the air, the temperature usually has a really mild, you know, environment. So in this way, bug down there, insects, is not a popular down there. So in this way, you have not, you, remember, we try to grow, naturally grow tea. So in this way, we're not using any, co any kind of a chemical. So in this way, higher elevation is best, is the best. And well, regarding... What, what type... Go ahead. What type of tea do they grow? in Taiwan for oolong tea. Okay, let me ask you this question uh, to Mr. Fong. Mr. Fong is one of those uh, Americans which is uh, cannot <laughs> speak English quite well yet. He still need <laughs> to translate. The question is, uh, uh, is uh, in Taiwan, oolong tea? Yeah, Taiwan uh, In Taiwan, Mr. Fang talking about oolong tea is very popular in higher mountain range. Uh, about 1,000 feet, 1,000 feet elevation. It's about 1,000 feet elevation or even higher. Yes, 1,000 meter elevation is better. Oh, oh. 1,000 meter elevation is better. I need strong. to convert that into a, into a, into a okay, ER. Okay, blood by three. It's about 3,000 3, feet, feet, I believe. <laughs> three, about 3,000 feet. Second <laughs> question is, so where you... This is the more 1,000 meter. Okay, this, this is the example is, uh, uh, is uh, from the 1,000 meter. This is a baby uh, seven, 700 this is about a uh, need to two, grow two, 700, two, two, 700, feet. 700. Two, But anyway, uh, we save some time. I hope to answer your question. Your second question is, where you get some tea plants? 300. 
Three hundred. That's three hundred. That's one thousand. Yeah, one thousand feet. Yeah. Same, same, same. Two thousand. So the T plan uh, is uh, the USDA did a intensive research on the propagate uh, Hawaiian tea, which is spent a lot of efforts. Very beautiful work is done. However, research is research. They have a small quantity. So, uh, but uh, I really like those kind of variety USDA produced because the quality is uh, really, really good. There are so many people from Taiwan to evaluate the tea grown by USDA experimentation station in Volcano and Waimea. They suggest that's the best tea they never, they ever tasted before. So, uh, however, that's one source. Uh, you can get a very limited quantity, based on my understanding, uh, for the tea uh, cutting, tea cutting to start. Also, Mr. Fong is uh, working, you know, with uh, USDA, and uh, they made us have their own propagation. So uh, they got a cutting and the sealing. So I do not know if it's appropriate or not. Just introduce Dr. F um, Mr. Fong to you, so you can contact Mr. Fong if you have further tea plant uh, questions. Okay, I hope that answers the question. Uh, we have another caller on the line. Uh, could you let us know where you're calling from and go ahead with the question, please? Hello, I'm Hi. calling from Oahu. Okay, and your question? Yes, I'd like to know the gentleman that showed us how to brew coffee in the coffee maker. Yes. <laughs> and, uh, I don't want to go through all his procedure. Could I just put your coffee in the filter and then put the hot water in and let it brew like I do the coffee? Okay, Robert. <laughs> Thank you for interesting this uh, homegrown method. But anyway, this is my method. It's not a necessarily good one. But uh, but uh, in, in order to enjoy the tea, in order to enjoy the tea, so we need uh, you know do a lot of experiments ourselves at home. But here is uh, the filter which I use. If we can turn camera in there. So like a coffee, the filter stop a lot of the tea leaf the draining. But they leave the tea leaf, either tea leaf on top of the filter, less the water, uh, waste the tea drain, draining down to the, the containers. However, the coffee maker, when we do use a coffee maker, brew the coffee, the coffee, when water uh, you know, goes through the filter, the water, coffee will immediately drip into the container. The filter through, the filter through. However, tea need a longer time than coffee. So you need to give a tea a little time to interact with the hot water. That's the reason why I found out if we take this lid out, then put it in a container in there and let tea cooking on top portion, about it holding two cups. So it turned out really, really good. You may want to try it. So, but uh, it's different. If we, we put the lid on when we're cooking it, the water will immediately go through the tea and have a really cool physical contact, hot water, have a really short physical contact with the tea leaf, then they immediately drilling down. So that's the reason why. So uh, make tea uh, is uh, not the same way as make a coffee. I, just my subjective uh, <laughs> ideas. So uh, give tea leave a longer time to interact with uh, hot water, then you can brew very tasty tea. That's just a subjective thank idea. Thank you. Thank you. Mahalo. Thank you. Okay, thank you for calling uh, from the island of Oahu. We have another caller. Uh, could you let us know where you're calling from and go ahead with the question, please. Good evening, Dr. Fuji. This is Pat, Pat from Honomu. Honomu. Yes, okay. <laughs> yeah. How much caffeine does the different type of tea have? What is, what is the caffeine. different types of caffeine. packaging? No. Packing. How much caffeine in caffeine. each different type of the green, the ulu, and the black? Okay, okay. I'm going to... I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe green tea will be uh, uh, Highly. Green tea will be Yeah. Caffeine. I actually, uh, if I answer this question, <laughs> I just pretty much yeah, guessing, basing, I try to search my uh, memory. So I haven't got a really good article to answer this question. 
So uh, based on my understanding about the tea themselves, just like you, I'm also a beginner, try to understand tea. I truly enjoy drinking tea now, but I never drink soft drink anymore because I really enjoy the taste and the after drinking, the, the residual in your mouth. So the, the, the caffeine, see in the tea, I believe when enzyme process longer, they generate more chemical into the water. I just believe that the black tea should have more caffeine concentration than white tea and green tea. That's a guess, but we need to answer your question scientific way, so based on research, I just cannot do that, just guess. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, maybe some of our viewers out there might know the answer, so if you know the answer about how much caffeine there is in the different varieties of teas, uh, please give us a call. Uh, we have Thank another you, caller Dr. on the line. Uh, could you let us know where you're calling from and go ahead with the question, please? Hello. Hi. Uh, I'm calling from Pepe Kill. Okay, Pepe Kill, and your uh, question? I was wondering, could you go through the filter process again? Okay, uh, Robert, that filter process seems to be pretty popular tonight. Can you cover <laughs> that again for us? Oh, I'm so glad you. I'm so glad you also enjoy it because uh, uh, at home myself, I just uh, have no such luxury to buy some uh, sophisticated uh, coffee brewer. I just watch my uh, coffee maker. Why I should turn this, you know, into a tea brewer? Let's try. What I did is like this. I put it original, uh, uh, you know, just like a filter, coffee, I'm not a big coffee drinker huh, anyway, but uh, I think I need to put this into good use. So I put it as a <laughs> loosening tea leaf on top, on top the, the filter, just like exactly what you do in the coffee. You put it, position this uh, filter into place. Remember, the key to make a tea is this lid. When you try to brew, uh, brew this uh, teas, I, actually I right now I put some water in. Put some water in. So uh, we're starting to brew it. The water, hot water is cooked, but the hot water will stop on top. Without this lid, the, the water is trapped on top of the, uh, this coffee maker. Give tea leaf enough time to come in, in, interact with the tea leaf. But uh, in this, in order to catch the overflow, you need to put this, uh, you know, the, 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 the pot back to the position without the lid, without the lid. When you cook the coffee, you put the lid on because the coffee do not need a long time. Water and the coffee do not need a too long time. But the coffee, as you can see on the camera, could you turn on the coffee maker? The overhead camera, Okay, please. overhead. See, please. the water is deposit, deposited on top. On the bottom, they never drinking through, uh, leaking through. Because the reason why, at this time, you give a tea leaf a perfect timing to, to brew, to cooking on top. So uh, roughly about one minute, the if water is, uh, is more enough, they will overflow. The overflow make a really good uh, oolong tea. And, but uh, after cooking a little while, little while, you put a tea lid back to the container, back to the container, so you're ready to serve. At this moment, you put it back, this is a tea, the, tea, uh, the coffee pot with the lid back to the position. You will see immediately the tea starting draining down. So the difference between using coffee maker to brew the tea and using coffee maker bring up brew the coffee is the timing on top, on the top. Tea need to learn, learn. hopefully this answer your question. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, well, thank you for calling, and uh, we have about another uh, five minutes to go, and we are coming to you live from the television studios located in the Mo'okini Library here at the University of Hawaii at Hilo, and you're watching Agriculture 194C, Focus on Agriculture, and we're talking about tea tonight, so if you have any questions uh, regarding tea, please give us a call. The numbers are on the screen, 97 Four seven seven two six and nine six one nine zero four six. 
And my guests this evening are Dr. Sabri Shihata, Professor of Agriculture Economics at the College of Agriculture here at the University of Hawaii at Hilo. We also have with us Dr. Robert Chi, uh, Program Director for the Institute of Agricultural Products and Marketing Education. And we also have Doc, uh, Mr. Uh, Fong, who is the uh, owner of Fong Pacific Nursery here in uh, Kurdistan, I believe. And uh, I, we have another caller. Thank you for calling. And uh, will the caller let us know where you're calling from? And go ahead with the question, please. Hello, you're Hello, on the air. Hello, I'm calling from Hilo. And okay. I'm interested in the quality of black tea. OK. And what it is that improves the breathing for emphysemic patients. <laughs> what? Could, could you repeat that, the last part of the question again? What ingredient in black tea promotes uh, breathing for an emphysemic patient? Okay, what is it in black tea that might be able to help a person with emphysema? <laughs> Uh, look like this is another specific question we cannot answer. However, there are research is there. Uh, currently, we just finished with a group of very enthusiastic people in the, uh, in the volcano area. Uh, we develop a website for Hawaii, try to form a Hawaii Tea Society for non-profit organization. We develop a website, and this website, there are many links uh, is available is uh, leak, and, you know pointed to a lot of research did by from Europe and you know the, in the United States and also Asia. So uh, there are so many countries contributed to this uh, kind of tea research. We just have no such knowledge to answer this specific question. However, the website will have a lot of research articles available. So uh, if you would like uh, to uh, further question. And uh, in near future, probably, you know, give another month so, the Hawaii Tea Society Association, uh, Tea Society will have a website launched. And uh, down there, there are a lot of research, you know, evidence. Do you here. have a, a URL or address for that website yet, uh, Robert? Uh, not yet, because uh, currently they are proposing to form a legal uh, entity. Okay. Before the legal entity is formed, we cannot legally and uh, release the website yet. Okay, so probably maybe in a month or two, uh, the Tea Society may be uh, forming, and uh, the Tea Society will have a website, and uh, you could probably go to google.com and... Uh, Look for a Hawaii Tea Society, and uh, you might find the website in about two months from now. But uh, unfortunately, we don't have any knowledge about uh, how black tea may help uh, emphysema patients. So uh, if somebody knows anything about that, uh, I'd appreciate them calling and uh, letting us know. Sorry we couldn't answer that question for you. Uh, in the meantime, we do have another caller. Uh, could you let us know where you're calling from? And go ahead with the question, please. Hello? Hi, where are you calling from? I'm calling from the island of Kauai. Okay, and your question? Um, uh, this question is for Dr. Fong. Okay. Uh, his nursery, have you heard of uh, Mamaki tea? And ting to me, ting to me, shall I the mamaki tea? May I tingle? Huh? May I tingle? Well, I, I know something about mamaki tea. Mamaki is a local plant. Uh, I think it's a native plant. Uh, it's, uh, what you do is you just get the leaves and you dry the leaves out. And sometimes you find mamaki tea uh, in the local uh, supermarket. Uh, some yeah. say that it's uh, good for high blood pressure, but uh, I, I'm not too sure about that. Uh, but, you know, we completely run out of time. I'm sorry, I can't uh, say thank anything you. more about that. But uh, I want to thank you all for joining us this evening, especially Dr. Sabri Shihata, Dr. Robert Chi, and Mr. Fong for joining us and sharing their knowledge about uh, uh, tea and how to serve tea. 
Uh, next Thursday is spring break, so we will not be with you next Thursday, but two Thursdays from tonight, we'll be back. So this is Jack Fiji saying thank you for watching and have a good evening. Is it good? Is it very good?